boy. Good boy. Ready for this video? There, there's the star of the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is an update on Coda over here. So thank you so much to the subscriber who recommended that I do this video. She really wanted an update on Coda and I think that's really awesome that you guys cared <laughs> that much about Coda in this puppy video. It's kind of gone a little viral. I don't know, we have quite a amount Quite a big amount of views on that video which is awesome so I think it's just kind of like telling me to make all my videos about Coda like no one cares about me <laughs> everyone only wanted an update on Coda not me so anyways he is in every single one of my videos in some capacity because he's velcro dog so he's always next to me so check out my other videos because <laughs> he is in every single one I promise you he's now chosen to be in the corner so so I wrote down some notes of things that I wanted to cover in this update video. Basically we're gonna go through like me having him at eight weeks to how old he is now and he's almost nine months old now because time goes by way too fast during quarantine. It's insane. So we're gonna go through everything. We're gonna go through like the statistics stuff like his weight and height. I'm gonna go through like all of his habits, his temperament, training, all of that. So. Let's get right into it. Let's start off with the statistical stuff. So, weight and height. To be honest, I don't have heights. Sorry, I only have his current height, which is about 12 to 13 inches at the withers, I believe they call it. And it's crazy because before I got him, I was like trying to understand the heights of dogs because they always say that online. And when I heard like 14, 15 inches, I was like, that feels really tall. Like, that's a pretty big dog. Now, he's like 12 to 13 inches at the withers and it seems literally puny. Like, it's <laughs> it's really big compared to what he was when we first got him because he was probably like, he was probably like this tall, like overall when we first got him, which is probably like, what, 10 inches, nine, 10 inches. He's definitely a toy Aussie and all the other Aussies that I see on Instagram are always like huge compared to him even if they're like minis. Anyway, so for weight, at eight weeks when we got him he was about two and a half pounds. At his first vet appointment which was two days after we picked him up, so he was eight and a half weeks then because we got him two days after he was eight weeks. So when he was eight weeks and four days, that was his first vet appointment, which I just took him to to like make sure everything was okay, kind of just a vet check. He didn't really get any shots or anything then. He was 2.9 pounds at that, and they say that they usually gain a pound every week when they're puppies, so it makes me think that he was probably definitely two and a half pounds when he was eight weeks and then he was yeah like 2.93 pounds at nine weeks then by the time that he was 13 14 weeks he was already five pounds so he was basically gaining a pound about a pound or less every week um so yeah when he was like 12 weeks is when he had his next vet appointment and that was for his next round of shots and he was about 4.2, 4.4-ish 4 .4 pounds and then like a week or a few days less after that he had to go to the vet again because we had like a injury scare. We were doing fetch in the hallways because he had an insane amount of energy. He's not as energetic as he was those first few weeks. He was like literally insane then and maybe it's because we take him on walks now. He wasn't allowed to go on walks then because he was so young but he had like an insane amount of energy. We'll get into that. So anyways he had a little scare because he bumped into something when we were playing fetch. So we took him to a vet that night. He was fine. Just a sprain and then we took him to a vet again which was his regular vet a week later because we had to go to an emergency one his at his vet i remember him being about like 4.4 pounds yeah i remember like thinking five pounds is a lot then 
because I was like, oh my god, he's a toy Aussie and he's already five pounds. And I remember trying to calculate like how much he would end up weighing. And everything did say he would be, most of the things said he would be like 10 to 12 pounds. But then some were saying like 20 pounds and I started freaking out that he was going to be way bigger. <laughs> but he's now stopped. So he was five pounds in January. We got him in December. February, he became six pounds to seven pounds. Then March, he was eight-ish pounds. And then April 1st, I remember he had another vet appointment that day. Oh, he had worms. He had worms. Oh, yeah, that was disgusting. I forgot about that for a second. That was gross. And I also felt very bad because that worm was huge. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. So, yeah. And in April, he was nine pounds. I'm guessing in May, he became 10 pounds, basically. Um, yeah, he became 10 pounds in May. And then June, which was last month, he got neutered. And at that, he was about 11, 11 and a half pounds, I believe. I'm sorry, I don't have per I don't have exact numbers. And now I would say he's about 12 pounds, but I'm gonna put the exact number here and his withers height also, which I said was about 12 to 13. Let's talk injuries since I kind of brought that up. Oh my God. This is a really funny thing he does. He'll like sleep upside down. I've seen a lot of Aussies sleep like this, but it's just so funny that he does it on my bed. He looks hilarious. Like he does it in his own dog bed sometimes, um, but he actually does it more on my bed now I've noticed. I feel like as he's become more comfortable with us too, he's starting to do this. It's really funny. I have so many pictures of him in this position because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Injury, illnesses, that kind of thing. So in early January, um, he was about 12 weeks at that point. It was nighttime and he was, it was the witching hour. As people know, when you have a puppy, there are witching hours where they're just like literally insane. And it's always around the same time, like seven to nine-ish. We were playing fetch in um, a long hallway we have in the house and it was with the ball. And what you'll learn is that like with the new puppy, their paw eye <laughs> coordination is not as good. Like now I can actually tell he has an understanding of like what will happen when he bumps into things. And he's like very like a lot better about stopping when he's running because like a wall is there or there's a chair in the way like he knows that something is there and it will hurt him if he crashes into it but when they're puppies they don't have that type of coordination understanding yet so yeah he basically like ran into the wood post that we have at the bottom of our stairs and it was so sad and scary because he like did his like shriek scream thing that he did a lot then when he was like exploring the world and like getting hurt because his like uh paw or nail would get like caught in something briefly so he'd like freak out and do this like shrieking thing so it was that kind of shriek um but it was like a few times like it was a little bit like it was like crying shrieking and it was just so sad because he like limped onto the ground and I just remember like literally freaking out like I like went onto the ground and um yeah everyone was there like you know everyone ran over and was like seeing how he was and then like kind of right away I was like I kind of felt like it was broken and I was just like freaking out mostly so yeah like we need to go to vet so my brother and sister found a vet that was open because it was night it was like eight or nine so we ended up being at the vet until like 11, 11.45ish, I think we got home. Yeah, at the vet they did x-rays and stuff and he was so calm. Then it was like actually quite adorable how calm he was during all of that because um, he just like sat in my lap the entire time that we were waiting in the vet's office. It was adorable. <laughs> And he was so small then, now that I think of it, like, we had thought he had grown a lot then, but now, seeing his full size, he was still so small then. We were, we were very blessed and lucky that he ended up being okay. I remember I slept on the couch next to him that night. Um, I had so many horrible nights of sleep in the beginning. And, yeah, the, that vet gave him, like, a lot of medication, so he had, like, diarrhea that first night. And I remember just, like, picking him up in the middle of the night to 
so that he would know that I was there and it was like all okay. I think that was around like 3 or 5 a.m. Yeah, after that first day, like I gave him medicine one more time that day and then I talked to his regular vet who's more of a holistic vet. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw him in the viewfinder. It's hilarious. Yeah, I talked to his holistic vet and he said that like normal vets just over medicate so I didn't really need to give him any more medicine and like the next day he was honestly fine like I don't think he really ever limped except for maybe like once or twice and then a week later we got a checkup with his regular vet and he was totally fine at that point it was really just a precaution that we wanted to check up again it was his first injury and then the worms thing was I think like I took him to dog parks in like early March because that was before quarantine. Early March and stuff I was trying to take him to more dog parks and get him more comfortable with that and he was really starting to open up and then end of March um, he started doing like weird things because he was fully potty trained at that point and he was sleeping on my bed one night that was like before I like let him sleep in my bed every night and one night he was sleeping in my bed and around 3 a.m. he jumped off my bed and like was waiting by my door and um, I picked him up and put him back on my bed because I was like, what the heck dude, like it's 3 a.m. like why are you trying to get down? And it was because he had to poo so he ended up pooing in my room and it was like one big piece and I was like, okay fine he did his business in my room whatever so I took that out and then I just put him back on my bed I was like okay sleep again and he slept and then 30 minutes later he jumped off again so I was like dude yeah something is up so I took him downstairs and I put him in his pen and he was still like crying a little bit so it was like clear he had to go to the bathroom so I took him out to the bathroom and he had like diarrhea and a day or two after that i found a huge worm like you i don't even know if you guys want to know but it was like like at least that long in his poo it came out in his poo it was frightening literally disgusting frightening gross ew Ugh. so <laughs> he was kind of skinny that month so now it like makes sense that maybe the worm was doing that to him yes yeah, so i took him to the vet after that and he got medication he's been fine touch what seriously such a goofball the funniest dog ever. For training, I put him in puppy classes and starting at 10 weeks. I did Pet Smart, but then all the puppies in that were not really like his type of puppy. He was 10 weeks old and he was this small. And there were two nine month old huskies, which back then I was like, oh my god, they're so old and now code is nine months. And I'm like, oh, he's still a baby. Yeah, there were two nine month old huskies, which were full grown. They were ginormous. There were two other Australian Shepherd type of mixes, maybe. I don't know. They didn't really look like him, but they were like six months at the time. And then there were, was another dog, which was like a mixed dog, and it was also bigger and kind of aggressive. For one of the classes, like a small poodle came, but starting maybe like three weeks into that, I signed him up for another puppy class where there were like actual smaller puppies that he could socialize with still there weren't a lot of puppies that were his size most of the puppies were bigger but they were actual like real puppies just like a couple months old types and that was a lot better that was at a private training place the PetSmart one was fine like he did learn a good amount and I do recommend it for people the private classes that I went to which were like puppy puppy socialization classes and they had time to like run around in a little area I liked that setup more I do think that some pet smarts and pet co's do kind of have a setup like that but the one that we went to didn't really it was more just like training in the store in like a little corner and then walking around the store which I felt like wasn't as helpful because I wanted him to be able to socialize because what we found out was he was terrified of other dogs within those two weeks that he didn't really like socialize with other dogs from like when I picked him up at eight weeks to ten weeks when he started classes he developed like a huge fear of dogs so it took a while to get him to open up and still to this day he is opening up. He's not a type of dog who like likes to physically play too much with others. He prefers to just like sniff dogs and like run away from them, which I guess is kind of a sort of play too. And at home I started training him like as soon as he came 
poem. Like he knew his name within I think three days of him being here or at least he knew to look at me when I called his name. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. He was so smart. So, so smart. I really could tell the difference with like having an Aussie because they are so intelligent like even at eight nine ten weeks like such escape artists i think a lot of aussies know us other aussie owners like say this too but man aussies they know how to escape they really do like i could not leave the room without him finding a way to escape and like we have this like big great room area where like the family room is there and then the kitchen is there so I would want him blocked off in like the family room area, right? I would try to be in the kitchen making myself lunch or something and 10 times, 10 times in one hour, he found a way to escape. Like he would squeeze through the fence somehow, he would do something, like it was crazy. Like he really could not stand being away from me back then, but it's nice that as he's grown older, he's become a lot more independent. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, he knows like for training, you know, he knows a good amount of tricks. I really don't like care that much for him to know a lot of tricks. I think he knows a good amount and I'm not like the type of person who like, like a lot of people like to train their dogs to do really cool things and like that's really cool like I wish he could do that but it's just not a priority for me I don't know like I just prefer to have a more obedient dog dogs who do tricks are both but I just like I'm just I guess I just like don't care that much to do the tricks I think it's cool but like training him with tricks hasn't been that great of a priority for me sorry it's cool for them to know those things and he is very smart he picks up things pretty well that, that wasn't like supposed to be a shady comment towards people who train their dogs to do cool tricks but it somehow turned into that but I mean I think I'll like keep teaching him little tricks here and there but it's not my main focus with him <laughs> He has a lot of obedience things to work on too. Okay, for potty training, I would say he was fully potty trained at around three and a half months. I mean, fully potty trained meaning like he knew he was supposed to go outside and he also started holding it throughout the night, which was awesome. I didn't even like care to have him hold it throughout the night. He just decided he wanted to do it because I guess he got rewarded more for going outside, but it's cool that he figured that out on himself. I feel like a lot of dogs can't hold it throughout the night until they're like maybe four-ish to almost five months, but he held it pretty fast. I was surprised. I was like, dude, you don't have to do this. Like, I'm putting the pads for you there if you don't want to hold it overnight, but he, he just wanted to, so that was awesome. He started doing that around like three-ish months, I would say. Almost three and a half months. Three and a half months, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of sudden. He just like started to do it. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, he's had like accidents in the house up until like literally three weeks ago. He pooed once, but I think it was because of the neutering medicine. It made him go a little loco. And there he goes. But yeah, he doesn't really like, he doesn't have accidents anymore. I think that one was just because of medicine making him act weird. But he's totally fine. Like he knows he needs to go outside now. And yeah. And it was a struggle in the beginning, like I actually like cried over it, got so much anxiety over it, was so fed up over it because he refused to go outside for a while, but like just letting you know there is hope. They will figure it out soon. And if you're using potty pads inside, which I was, what helped transition him outside was I put it outside next to his grass path. And eventually one day he Maybe went on the potty pad outside, which is awesome. After that, like a week or so after of him going behind, you know, starting to hear there was all the potty pads outside, he went on the grass and you just you celebrate that, you know, you celebrate in front of them, be very happy about it, give them treats, make sure that they know that it's an exciting, good thing when they go outside. For temperament, in the beginning, like I said, he was insane. Like, I was literally like, oh my god, I have a high drive energy dog. Like, this is not what I was expecting. He's insane. But like the woman who we got him from said, like, dogs do adjust to you. So like, with all this like breeder stuff people are doing nowadays with like temperaments and like, this is a high drive, this is a medium drive dog. Like, you don't know. They're so young. Like, how can you actually tell that? Like, I'm sure it does tell to a certain extent but like with him he was literally insane and now look at him i'm not saying he's a lazy dog by any means he definitely has a lot of energy and we get that out in his walks and chewing and stuff but he's not as crazy as he was then he definitely sleeps a good amount which surprises me that he actually sleeps 
like that much the other day, but I like it because I can get things done now. It was hard in the beginning because I swear he did not sleep that much. Well, he did, but then like he would be up more periodically and crazy between his naps. Like to give you an example of his, of his schedule, so you kind of know what it's like. So you wake up anywhere between like seven and nine. It's scary to watch because of quarantine, but lately we've been sleeping until like So wake up around ten, take him out to go party. No. One, he eats one to two, you know, he eats lunch, and then they'll like maybe play around a little bit. Then, um, again, like he plays in the morning, then plays again in the afternoon a little bit, then it crashes for like at least two to three hours, like he is right now, like right now, four. So, this is like a good chunk of his sleep time. And then closer to like 4 30 or 5, he'll probably be a little crazy and start playing again. And then I feed him at 6 and then walk him after because it's summer so it's like only a nice temperature to walk later on in the day. So we've been walking mostly after dinner. Sometimes we do before but usually after. And then yeah, then we come back from the walk around like 8 and then usually he'll like play a little more just to get his last bit of energy out. And yeah, like 8.39 he's sleeping again around 10 30 we go for his last potty break and he'll play again kind of just doing his own thing because at that time i'm like showering and closing up so he'll play probably another 30 minutes to an hour and then 11 30 ish sleep again for the night for also for his temperament like he definitely used to be a lot more like shy of other dogs and lately like he always wants to go up to them but then if they start coming up to him he'll dart so it's mostly like he just wants to go up to dogs when they're not paying attention to him i always say that like if a dog doesn't pay attention to him he loves it because that's when he smells them when their like backs are face towards him and he can sniff their butt his temperament has changed with like testosterone <laughs> levels and puberty too because he used to like barely ever bark like he definitely did a little bit here and there because he is an aussie so they're vocal but he didn't really bark much at other dogs and bell rang and when people would come over and now he like always does that so we've been trying to train that out of him mostly he used to be good about not barking about the at the bell but i haven't reinforced it that well lately so it's my fault for not training him as much as i should with that but yeah, we've been working on it and like not barking at other dogs in the park and stuff. He's getting a little better with that again. And it's mostly just like our street he tends to be a little protective of, which is like normal with dogs. Like all the other dogs on our street bark at people when they walk by. So he's probably picked it up from them, which is what my brother pointed out. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Dogs learn from other dogs. So he's probably doing that because of the neighbor's dogs. But he's getting better and I have hope. <laughs> for him that he's gonna understand but he's still young and I feel like you know I had the expectation that like okay everything will be figured out by this time he's perfect and then you know you don't have to do anything else for their adulthood but that's not true like all dogs still learn new tricks and you constantly have to be reinforcing things and letting them know what what they can do and what they can't whatever so yeah he's literally like his head is literally on my pillow like he's a human I cannot with him. His favorite toy is a piggy toy. Also his greenie toy is like the one that he's like fixated on because it was his first toy as well as his chicken toy was another first. So those two he likes to like walk around and whine, hide them sometimes. Mostly hides his treats, like his little yak chew. His pig toy is his favorite for like letting out his energy. He'll always attack it during crazy hours. And he has a lot of energy and then in public spaces he's okay because of quarantine he has gotten a little worse with that he was definitely better before and a little more confident I, eh, no i don't know sometimes he was a little more confident sometimes he wasn't um, but he's he's okay-ish you know but still there's a lot of times where it's like a little too much for him so i just like like he does this thing where he like sits down and like backs up so it's like i can't move him otherwise the harness will come over his um head so I have to pick him up a lot during those times. You know, we'll work through it. We'll try to get him more comfortable with stuff. 
Um, as for his favorite people, I thought that would be interesting for you guys to know. You know, obviously, like, gravitor gravitates towards me, but also because he's with me most of the day. He'll only, like, go crazy seeing me if I've, like, left for a little bit and then I come back. But I'd say that his favorite person is probably my dad, which I always say it's so funny that he loves my dad so much because my dad doesn't do anything for him. Like, he doesn't walk him, he doesn't feed him, he doesn't train him. Well, he does give him scraps from his food, but that's another thing. But yeah, it's just an energy thing, I guess. He just, like, really loves my dad. He always greets him with the most, um, <laughs> I don't know, love, energy, craziness in the mornings, so. But he's really become more of a family dog. Like, he definitely, like, only was, like, connected to me before, but now he's, like, really good with everyone like he loves my siblings and my parents um like he loves to you know get cuddles and scratches from them play with them get chased by them all that stuff so he also ha like loves a lot of my friends too he gets excited to see them it's cute i think that's everything i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like it and subscribe for coda for more coda content i'll definitely make some more i want to do like a day in the life of him like a day in the life but from his perspective so let me know if you guys would be interested in that i'll just let you guys watch him while i do this outro because who really wants me anyways um but yeah that's that's that you guys we have some exciting news coming up so i'll also make another video about that it's not another dog but some people have thought that it's not a new puppy i really wish but not ready for that. He's enough responsibility for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this update video. I hope it was helpful. I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys like about him growing up and whatever. I didn't want it to be like very structured also because I don't really have the numbers for structured like the weight and height stuff. I just have like estimates that around what he was. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much if you watched and if you have any questions for me about Aussies or new puppies and stuff please let me know down below. I'm gonna do like a puppy haul slash essentials video too so you guys know what you need to prepare for your new pup. Thanks again so much for watching and we will catch you guys in my next one or in the next in our next one. Yeah we'll catch you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye!